Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Working with text in PowerPoint is easy. It's similar to working in a word processing program like Microsoft Word, so the experience should be pretty familiar to you. All you have to do is insert a text box or click an existing placeholder, and your cursor will appear inside. Now you can type anything you want. You can use the space bar on your keyboard to add spaces. And if you want to start a new line, just press Enter. If you make a mistake like I did, that's OK. You can press Backspace or Delete to fix it. You can also use your keyboard's arrow keys to move the insertion point left, right, up, or down. This is useful if you only need to move a few spaces or lines at a time, but you can also jump over entire words at a time. Hold the Control key and press the left or right arrow keys to jump over one word at a time. There may come a time when you need to work with text in your presentation, maybe to copy and paste it or to move it to a different location. To do that, you need to know how to select text first. Just click and drag your mouse over the text, then let go. See how it's highlighted gray? That means the text is selected. To select all of the text on an entire slide, go to the Select command on the Home tab and choose Select All. Pressing the Control key and A key on your keyboard at the same time will also select all the text. Now that we know how to select text, let's try copy and paste. Just click the copy command on the ribbon, choose where you want the text to go, then click paste. You can also get to these commands by right-clicking on the slide. For example, to cut and paste, start by selecting your text, then right-click, and choose Cut. The original text will disappear, and now we can paste it anywhere we want by right-clicking again. If you want to move a selection of text from one place to another, you can use the drag and drop method. First, select the text you want to move. Now click and drag where you want it to go. If you make a mistake or change your mind, you can use the Undo button on the toolbar to undo the last action. To the right is the Redo button. This allows you to reverse the last undo. Next, I'd like to take a look at formatting options like font color, size, and alignment, all of which can have a big effect on your presentation. To format text in PowerPoint, you can select just the text you want, or you can select an entire text box and format everything inside at once. 
You might want to start with the options in the font group, where you'll find lots of different features that you can play around with. In this example, I'm going to choose a different font color, a different font, and a slightly bigger size. I'm also going to format the text in italics. See what a difference all these changes can make? If you want to change the placement or alignment of your text, take a look at the commands in the paragraph group. Your options include left, center, right, and justified, which can be used to align paragraphs. I think centered looks best. Also in this group, you can change the vertical alignment, the text direction, or add or remove bullets from your text box. These are all great ways to customize your text, so your slide looks exactly the way you want. Now you know the basics, including cut, copy, and paste, undo and redo, and even some formatting techniques. That should be everything you need to know to work with text in PowerPoint. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Shapes are a great way to make your presentations more interesting. PowerPoint gives you a lot of different shapes to choose from, and they can be customized to suit your needs, using your own color palette, preferences, and more. To get started, go to the Insert tab, click the Shapes command, then take a look at the menu and see if there is anything you want to use. In this example, we're going to select the heart shape here. To draw your shape, click and drag the mouse roughly where you want it to go. The shape will appear with your current color scheme. The quickest way to change the look of your shape is to use one of the predefined shape styles on the Format tab. These options will depend on the colors that are part of your current theme. Just hover over each one for a preview and see if there's anything you like. You can also use the commands on the right to choose your own formatting options, such as the fill color, outline color, and other shape effects. You can even change the shape itself if you want to try something different. Make sure that the shape you want to change is selected. Then click the Edit Shape command on the far left of the Format tab. You can then choose a new shape from the menu. I'm going to go with the sun shape. And I think I'd like to make a few more tweaks. First, I'm going to make the shape a little smaller using the sizing handles here. These can be found on the sides and the corners of any shape or object in PowerPoint. Every shape also has a rotation handle that you can drag in any direction to rotate it. If your shape has any yellow handles, like the one you see here, you can use those to make other adjustments. In this case, the yellow handle changes the proportions of the sun, but it really just depends. Some shapes don't have this option at all. Finally, I think I'll change the fill color to something that's a little more appropriate for a sun. How about this yellow color? The great thing about shapes is that they can be combined and customized to create your own unique graphics. Mastering this element can take time, but with a little practice and a little creativity, you can create almost anything. Let's try adding another shape so I can show you what I mean. And I'll just tweak the fill color. And remove the outline. And there we go. When you're working with multiple shapes, there may be a time when you want to change the order so the correct shape is in front or on top. This will come up a lot with shapes, so it's a good technique to know. Just right click one of your shapes, then go to Bring to Front and Send to Back. Now you may need to experiment with these options to make sure your shapes are arranged the way you want. In this example, I've selected the cloud shape, and I want to move it behind the sun. So I'm going to choose Send to Back, then Send Backward. And that'll do it. 
There are so many things you can do with shapes in PowerPoint. This graphic is just one example. So give it a try and see what you can come up with. You can use just one shape at a time, or you can try combining them to create something new. So I'm almost finished with this presentation. I've typed in everything I need to share about the company's new wellness program, but I'd like to add some pictures to make my slides look a little more interesting. It's easy to insert a picture using the placeholders on your slides. All you have to do is click this icon. However, there are a few other ways to add an image, even if your slide doesn't have a placeholder like this. It all starts with the Insert tab. I already know what picture I want to use for this slide, and I have it saved to my computer. That means I can use the Pictures command to locate the image and insert it. The picture will appear on the slide. To move this picture while it's still selected, I'm just going to click and drag where we have plenty of room over here. Now let's take a look at the next slide. I don't really have an image in mind for this part of the presentation, but PowerPoint does have some built-in options we can use. Just go back to the Insert tab and click the Online Pictures command. From here, you can use Bing to search the web for stock photos, clip art, and other graphics. Or you can access images from your OneDrive account if you have any stored there. You can also just browse the image categories if you need any ideas. Let's try a web search. Just type your search term in the box, then press Enter on your keyboard. By default, Bing only shows images that are licensed under Creative Commons, which means it's okay to use them in your own projects. Just to be safe, though, you should check the image's website to make sure there aren't any restrictions. To find that website, click the icon in the bottom right corner of an image and follow the link you see here. This image looks good. To insert it, I'm going to click the thumbnail, then the Insert button, and the image will appear on the slide. This picture is a little big, but that's an easy fix. To change the size of an image, all you have to do is click and drag the sizing handles here. I'd recommend using the ones in the corner to make sure your image stays in proportion. I'm also going to move it just a bit. And to make it look a little neater, I'm going to use the rotation handle at the top to rotate it. There we go, that looks great. On my next slide, the picture I want to add is a bit more unique. I'm going to use a screenshot. A screenshot is an image of whatever is currently displayed on your screen. For example, I found a website that teaches different aspects of health and wellness, and I'd like to include a picture of it in the presentation. Let's go back to PowerPoint and then Insert, and then Screenshot to take a look at our options. I have two different windows open right now, including an Excel spreadsheet and the website I want to capture. Just click the window you want to take a screenshot of, and now we have a picture of the window on this slide. This isn't exactly what I wanted, though. This screenshot includes other parts of my browser, like the navigation buttons and the status bar. I'd like to see if we can take a picture of just the different topics in the middle. First, I'm going to delete this image by selecting it and pressing Backspace or Delete on my keyboard. Now I'll go to Insert, then Screenshot, and this time I'll select Screen Clipping. This will let us capture part of the page instead of the entire window. We'll also use the same technique we use to draw text boxes. Just click and drag to draw a box around the part of the image you want to capture. The screen capture will then appear on the slide. Resize and reposition the picture if you need to. And there we go. Whether you're working with photos that are already on your computer, online images, or even a simple screenshot, the right pictures can help make your presentations a lot more interesting. GCF Global. Creating opportunities for a better life.